happens when we don't take care of something the way it needs to be taken care of. Like this piece of bread. What happens if I don't wrap it up and I just leave it out on the counter? It's gonna get stale and hard and yucky, right? Ew. How about this nail polish? If I finish using it, but I don't put the cap back on, what's gonna happen? It's gonna dry out. It's not gonna be usable anymore. How about this can of pop? If I open it and then I don't drink it, and I come back two days later to try it then, it's gonna have lost the part that makes it delicious, the bubbles. It'll be flat, yuck. Or how about my remote control car? If I leave it on, even when I'm not playing with it, the batteries will die. And the next time I go to play with it, I won't be able to play with it because it won't have any battery life left. When we leave things out or we leave things running with no purpose, we call that idle. When the bread was idle, it grew stale and yucky. When the nail polish was idle, it dried up and it wasn't usable anymore. When the can of soda pop was idle, it lost the best part, the bubbles. When the remote control car was idle, the batteries died. Idleness always leads to trouble. But things aren't the only thing that can be idle. People can be idle too. We could say that when it comes to people, idle means choosing to spend your time doing nothing worthwhile or nothing at all. You see, we were all created to serve God and worship Him. And if we choose not to do the things we were created to do, we have idle hearts. And I know this one thing, an idle heart always leads to trouble. Remember last week we learned about David and how he was chosen to be the king of God's people after King Saul. The reason David was chosen to be king is because God could see his heart and he said, David has a heart that is wanting to worship and serve me. And I know I can trust him to do what I need him to do. In other words, David wanted to serve God and worship him only. Remember, worship is when we make something most important in our lives. So David became king and they lived happily ever after, right? Wrong. One day, David's army was going into battle. And in David's day, the king would always go with his army. He would lead them into battle. But for some reason, this time, David chose to stay home. David chose to be idle. He chose to do nothing worthwhile or nothing at all. And what do we know about being idle? An idle heart always leads to trouble. Uh-oh, can you see where this is going? Well, one night he couldn't sleep, and so he got up to go for a walk, and he was taking a walk on the roof of his palace, and from the distance he could see a woman who was also awake, and he wanted to meet her. And so he sent one of his workers to go and bring her back to his palace so he could spend time with her. Why? Because he was bored, and bored is a problem when bored leads to idle. And idle is doing nothing worthwhile or nothing at all. The lady's name was Bathsheba and she was married. But King David was so taken by her beauty, he wanted her to spend time with him at his palace. This was a sin because not only were they not married, she already had a husband. But David was idle and idle hearts always lead to trouble. After some time passed, Bathsheba sent a message to David to tell him that she was going to have his baby. Well, long story short, David tried to cover up his sin. But if there's one thing we can tell from all the stories of people's mistakes in the Bible, it's this, that your sin will always be found out. And the longer it takes for sin to be revealed, the more embarrassing it will be. You heard more of David's story in the Bible story video we shared earlier. Eventually, David repented. He turned back to God. He felt awful about what he had done. He asked God's forgiveness, and of course, God forgave him. And they all lived happily ever after, right? Wrong again. You see, even though God forgave David and David turned back to God, sin always causes death. And so the baby that was born to David and Bathsheba grew sick and died all because David chose to be idle. He chose to spend his time doing nothing worthwhile or nothing at all. David learned the hard way that it's better to include God in every part of your life, to serve him and to worship him only, and to not allow his heart to grow idle. And now we have an opportunity. We can learn from David's mistake or we can make our own mistakes and learn it the hard way. I know for me personally, I'd rather learn from David's mistakes. So let's take a moment right now and pray. Let's ask God to help us not to grow idle, but to worship him fully and have our hearts fixed on him. Would you pray with me?
God, thank you that you love us so much that when we make mistakes, you don't want us to live in them forever. Thank you, God, that you will always forgive us. Would you help us to serve you and worship you only? Would you help us to not grow idle? Would you help us to keep our hearts fixed on you, doing the things that you would have us do so that we can glorify you and honor you in every area of our lives? In your name, amen. Okay, friends, it's time to pause and pray. I'm going to put a couple of questions up on the screen, and I want you to pause this video and talk to Jesus. Think of three things you spend your time doing during a day. Are any of these things idle? Things that aren't worthwhile? Here are some questions to help you determine if something is an idle activity. Does this activity help others? How long do you spend doing this activity? Do you sometimes do this activity when you should be doing homework or chores? Does this activity help you get to know God better? Would God be proud of you for doing this activity? Let's memorize God's word together. Luke 4, 8 says, You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Can you say that with me? You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. Let's hide some words and see if we can remember them. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. Ready to make it harder? You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. Hmm, that's not hard enough. Let's hide some more. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. Now it's getting tougher. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. Let's hide some more. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. Ready to make it harder? You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. All right, I think we almost have it. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Luke 4, 8. That's tough. Can you do it without me? Give it a try. Don't forget, we have fun stuff happening throughout the week on our Facebook page. Ask your grown-up to check in. Mm -hmm.